In the previous video, we covered simulating a base preamp circuit using ORCAD Capture and PSPICE. This video is going to cover transferring that board from Capture to PCB Editor to create a printed circuit board. The first step to making a printed circuit board is going to be adding footprints for each of your individual components in your circuit. To do this, you open the Capture circuit and you're going to double click on the individual component to which you want to add the footprint. A footprint acts as a physical layout for the size and pin spacing of the component when you want to put it on your actual printed circuit board. After you double click the component, a menu is going to pop up. As you scroll through that menu, you'll find the category titled PCB footprint. You're going to want to change the footprint value that's in that field. To do so, you first highlight the footprint value, and then you're going to navigate to the folder in your computer where the footprints are stored. In our case, it's in the local disk under the ORCAD folder. Once you enter the ORCAD folder, you go to the share folder within it. From there, you select PCB and PCB lib. It's going to be, the options will be devices and symbols. You want to choose symbols for your footprint. When you open it up, the, as you see, the PCB footprint names are sometimes a little hard to understand, but after a little research, you'll figure out what each one is. For the 8-pin dual inline package, we want to choose dip8.dra. DRA is the proper file extension to choose. So you double click on the file and highlight and copy just the name without the extension. You'll then copy and paste that into the PCB footprint section of the menu. Once that's selected, you click OK to say that you click OK to confirm that you want to make the change. Again, we'll do this on the next component. In this case, we're clicking on a resistor rather than a dual inline package. Again, we're going to navigate to the specific resistor footprint we want to use for that resistor on our printed circuit board. We scroll down and we decide to use resistor 800-DRA, res800-DRA. Again, we double click and highlight just the name portion of the file name without the file extension. Copy and paste that into the PCB footprint section. We're going to repeat this procedure for each individual component in the circuit. You can do that on your own as we're not going to show each component here. Once all your footprints are set, you have to annotate your circuit. To do so, go to the main folder for your project itself. With the folder selected, you go to Tools and click on Annotate. All the settings should be fine as they are, so click OK and then Yes. And then OK again. And it will annotate the circuit to prepare it to be made into a PCB. Next, you'll click Tools and Create Netlist. At this point, you'll want to click Yes to say that you do wish to make the changes. Make sure that Create PCB Editor Netlist is checked, as well as Create or Update PCB Editor Board. All the other settings should be fine by their defaults, so you should be able to click OK. Once you click OK, it'll ask you if you want to create the files, and click Yes twice to create the files. It will then create the netlist for your circuit. If the netlisting is successful, the PCB editor will automatically be opened. Once the PCB editor automatically opens, the first step is to define the size of your circuit board. This will lay the constraints of the physical dimensions of the circuit board itself. To do this, you go to Setup, Outlines, and Board Outline. To click Create. Once that menu comes up, you'll be able to change the physical dimensions of the board. Since our board was already created before this, we'll not, we're not going to do all the individual steps here. 
once you're finished, you click OK. The next step after creating the board the dimensions and the layout is to place all your components. You can replace them manually or using the quick place function. We use the quick place function to automatically place the components where the software sees them to be best fit. Now you click place and the components will automatically go into place. Now, click OK. The next step is to change your physical restraints of your board. Our purpose for doing this was to increase the line width of the traces. The, the default setting for the trace sizes set by PCB editor can be quite thin and isn't, doesn't always work well for all machines, so we thickened it up to 30 mils. In the physical constraints, you're also able to change the line width as well as the size of the pins, vias, and the holes in the board. These will all be adjustable in the unit of mils, which is one thousandth of an inch. The next step is to route the PCB. We chose to automatically route to create all of our traces in between the components. Make sure to select Smart Router and to enable Diagonal Routing. Under Routing Passes, you want to select Route and Clean. For selections, make sure to select the entire design for the Smart Routing. Finally, click Route and when using the Smart Automatic Router, it will automatically make traces connecting all your components properly. You may wish to edit the automatic traces from the auto routing afterwards if you wish. The next step is to create the Gerber files. To do this, click Manufacture and then Artwork. S select both the top and bottom layer of your board. The undefined line width should be set to 10 mils and the plot mode should be in positive. When you go to general parameters, you want to select the device type you're going to be using. In our case, the machine we're using recognizes the file type of the Gerber RS-274X. When you select the top and bottom layers, you see that each of them have an etch, a pin, and a via selection, for, as there will be particular drilling and etching for depending on each of these. From there, you click Create Artwork, and then OK. Next, we create the drill holes. To do this, you click Manufacture, NC, and then Drill. We're doing our drilling by layered pairs, so it does all the drilling in one shot rather than doing it by separate layers. Click on NC parameters. Make sure the format is 3 by 5 Also, we chose to use the enhanced Exelon format to enhance the drilling. From there, you'll click Drill, and it will create a drill layer in your artwork. From here, we're done with the PCB editor and can move on to using the PCB board making software. Now that our PCB design and artwork is done, we open CircuitCam. From there, we import the different layers of our board. We start off importing the bottom layer of Gerber file. Make sure to select the layer type as a bottom layer. Preview the layer to make sure all the artwork is correct and then click Import. Start off importing again to bring in the top layer, again previewing before you, before you select the import. Also make sure that the top layer is selected. The next step is to import the drill files. This will tell the milling machine where to drill your circuit board. Make sure to select the layer type as Drill Plated. A 
again preview to make sure everything's correct and then if you agree with what it's showing click import next click on contour routing first we'll do the routing for the outside click run again contour routing this time select inside it will, it will automatically select the bottom layer and click run again before we can make the board outline a layer has to be selected first we click the calculate button for the insulation process which calculates what insulators are needed for the circuit board now the outline of the physical circuit board can be drawn this will define the size of the board that is cut out from the copper blanks by the milling machine Next, click Rub Out All Layers, followed by Insulate All Layers. This process may take a few minutes to complete. Once the insulation and rub out are complete, you'll begin to see the boards begin to flesh out the way it will look on the actual circuit board. Save your files as bxr.cam since, since our amplifier is named bxr. If not, change the file name to what suits yours. Exit out of the software and click Yes to save the changes. Next, we'll be bringing the circuit into Boardmaster. Once the software opens, you'll want to open your. Once the software opens, you want to open the file you just created using the previous software. In this software, we move the layers of the board to where they need to be on the physical copper board. As you go through the different lists, it shows the different drill holes, the marking drills, the bottom and top milling layers, as well as all the other layers of the board and the order in which they need to be worked on the milling machine. After viewing all layers to make sure they're correct, after viewing all layers to make sure they're correct, you hit all, followed by start. This stops the motor on the machine and will give you a prompt to change the bit in the machine to the proper cuttering tool. Once you change to the proper tool, click OK. As you go along, it will continue to prompt you to change bits as needed and, and to flip the board and everything else that needs to be done to finish making the circuit board. You will be prompted through by Boardmaster each step of the way.